Hello and welcome to our latest unboxing video. I'm Eliza here at the Hatfield Public Library with a big box of kids books, beautiful kids books. I'm so excited to get into them. Just real quick, first you'll see I'm wearing one of our library t-shirts. We actually have new library t-shirts now in addition to these one. We have some long sleeve ones and we have some purple ones for kids and we have some pink ones just to spice things up. So if you get a chance to definitely stop by the library and check out our new t-shirts. Obviously uh, profits on the t-shirts um, go to the Hatfield Public Library. That's us. <laughs> Yay! Support what we do. Um, so here is my box of kids books. This one is Yay! Plenty of time for Easter after our Christmas book <laughs> late arrival debacle. It's good to get these things early. This one is called Open the Easter Bunny's Door oh, with 10 fun flaps to lift. Oh, cool. So cute. Apple and Magnolia uh, by Laura Gell and Patricia Mitola. And... Uh, hmm. Oh, this is about a girl who's friends with two trees who are her best friends, and then one of them starts to seem sick. Oh, that's such a sweet idea. <laughs> this is great. Say Hello to a Worm, A First Guide to Outside by Carrie Percival. And, um, oh, this is just about getting kids out into the garden and different things they can experience. Planting peas. Oh, tuck all the peas under the covers. Pea sprouts, so much fun. It's a good time for that book too. Saturday at the Food Pantry, and this is by Diane O'Neill and illustrated by Brazita Magro. And uh, oh my gosh, I love, I always love books that have like little lots of details of different things. So this is about a girl who um, goes to the, food pantry uh, on Saturday morning to get food and then she sees a classmate and the classmate is kind of embarrassed and doesn't want other kids to know she goes to the food pantry and then so she sort of like explores those feelings about like why her classmate might be embarrassed and um, why it's actually okay to be going to the food pantry. Oh my gosh. This is so great. It's called Bananas for You, story by Sabrina Moyle, pictures by Eunice Moyle. I feel like this one, I mean, I love to have books at the library, but this also seems like a really good one for like a present maybe for a kid, um, like, a, like a toddler birthday party present. Oh my goodness, just so cute and so sweet, so enthusiastic. This one is called Peacock and Sketch, and it's illustrated by Sandra Braphot. And uh, it's written by Alan Peterkin. And I like the uh, art style on this, this sort of like fun diagonal, like good sense of movement. <laughs> Just looks very fun, fun colors. Um, so this is, oh, I remember actually reading about this one. So this one is about a peacock who comes to the zoo, who lives in the zoo, and a little girl comes and draws him, and he's so flattered, and he decides to go out into the world and get more attention, but then he discovers that celebrity kind of has, you know, some difficulties. Maybe not, not as fun as you think it's going to be. Just Harriet by Elena K. Arnold. So this is a chapter book. We're taking a little break from picture books. And oh, I really love the cover of this. It looks like maybe a girl moving to a new house. Or it's a B&B. &B. Um, so it's about a girl named Harriet Werner, just finished third grade, has a cat named Matzo Ball, doesn't always tell the truth, and is spending summer vacation. Oh, oh, oh. So she's spending summer vacation with her grandparents who run a B&B &B on an island because her mom is having a baby and has a, a little trouble with the pregnancy. So it's sort of about like living with her grandparents and, you know, making, coming to terms with that and emotions. It looks like a sweet book. This one is called Hedgehog or Porcupine. Um, that is a question that plagues even many adults. Is it a porcupine? Is it a hedgehog? Uh, Show the difference because we have many porcupines near our house. <laughs> uh, let's see. We've got a couple more of these sort of nonfiction books. This one's uh, Greta Thunberg, Thunberg, Climate Act Activist. So that is a um, 
a biography, and these are good for kids who are like learning to read and interested about stuff, or and they also have information for kids who are doing a project. This one's called Understanding Emotions. Hello, oh, the newest Hilo book and the new Hilo book is featuring Gina and the Big Secret um, by Judd Winnick. And my kids love these books. I read a whole bunch of them with them, which was really fun. And Gina was sort of like a side character who I think is like moving in to become a main character, which is awesome. Very good series. If your kids like like graphic novels or even I feel like that was one of the first series that um, my son got like very, very enthusiastic about reading himself. So definitely try them out. Uh, if you have a kid around the right age, here's a nonfiction book about narwhals. It says, read all about me. Kids always love narwhals. I loved narwhals as a kid. Um, and again, this is like both a beginning reader and also a book with facts. So it sort of serves different roles. The uh, Katie Wu and Pedro Mysteries, Pedro Mysteries, The Birthday Party Mystery by Fran Manushkin, illustrated by Tammy Lyon. Um, this is a popular series uh, of beginning readers. Another graphic novel. This is a graphic novel based on the popular Spy School series by Stuart Gibbs. So that's kind of fun. Lots of times when there's popular kids series, we get a graphic novel variation. Pinkalicious message in a bottle. Just a big Pinkalicious fan. I don't know why. The books are so silly, but they're so fun. And uh, there she is. So these are also really good ones for kids. Kids who are learning to read. Oh, this one also a little bit late, but that's okay. Chinese New Year will come again. And this is called Bringing in the New Year by Grace Lin. Crush. Is this a replacement? This might be a replacement of a popular series, maybe, or is it a new one? Yeah, replacement, but, you know, worth it if you think, uh, you know, they're popular for a reason. We tend to replace the books that uh, get read a lot. Here's another little kids' nonfiction book, Fire Station. I think this will be popular uh, with the younger kids. And, oh my goodness, what is this? This is the, wait, 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 let me, let me see what's going on here. Katie the Cat Sitter. So this is the second in the Katie the Cat Sitter books. This is like a super fun series of graphic novels. And I looked at its circulation and the first one only circulated a few times, but I talked to one of the kids who read it and they liked it. So I think that I got the second one anyways, and I'm really hoping maybe it like picks up a little because I think that kids really would like it. And it's by Colleen A.F. Venable and Stephanie Yu. Best Friends for Never is the sequel. And da da da. Um, Magic Treehouse. This is number 36, Sunlight on the Snow Leopard. I like the of this cover. They're doing a really nice job. These are great uh, chapter books for kids. House Cat Trouble. What a cute cover. Oh, look at those big eyes. And House Cat Trouble by Mason Dickerson is a graphic novel. We're always getting new graphic novels. It says one house, three cats, and a lot of trouble. Hmm. It's not, I don't know. I don't think I, we expected this to be so tiny, but it is a show how guide on how to decorate eggs. It's like a craft book. It's got lots of ideas for different uh, things you can do when you're decorating your eggs. Um, but again, didn't really expect it to be so tiny. I worry it's going to get lost on the shelf. The Birders uh, by Rob Albanese. And aw, the kid looks so like excited. They both look really excited. Um, so... Oh, interesting. It's got bird facts, but what is it about? Oh, it's about Mr. Flynn and young Holly on an adventure to find an elusive snowy owl in this humorous and heartwarming intergenerational story. That looks very sweet. I think I just have like three more books. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Four more books. 
So we've got The Nian Monster by Andrea Wang. Oh, this is another Chinese New Year book. I think when Chinese New Year came around, we realized we wanted some more Chinese New Year's books. Um, and this is uh, one of the, uh, I think, stories, um, traditional um, sort of folk stories of China, maybe? By Andrea Wang, and it's illustrated by Alina Chow. This one is called Pow Wow Day, uh, Tracy Sorrell, illustrated by Madeline Goodnight. I think this might have been on an end of the year best of list. Um, and, oh, so this is about a girl who, um, it's, it's the day of the powwow, but she can't dance, I guess, because she's been sick. And so she's sad about that. So it looks like it also just has a lot of details about the powwow. <laughs> so this is a thin one. I missed this one. This one is called Pelt Pelt Fish Passover Treasure. Uh, and you can sort of see uh, the details of the Passover plate. And I think this just sort of gives us, uh, you know, uh, Pelt Pelt Fish's advanced ad adventures. <laughs> oh, it's so fun. They're cooking in this like battered stove under the sea. Um, Pelt Pelt Fish's adventures with Passover. And last of all, I am golden. Oh. Eva Chen, and this is illustrated by Sophie Dow, and this is about a girl who um, talks about how she sees beauty in the mirror, and um, this is a Chinese-American girl. Um, oh my gosh, and it's got a lot of self-information. This looks really beautiful, a lot of stuff about the food, and... Uh, there's a note on the back from the illustrator. So, oh my goodness, I'm so excited about all these new children's books and I will be back soon with more. Bye.